Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to talk about limiting reagents. Woo! So not every time in a reaction that all the reactants would get left over or run out and all the left all the other products are made. Like not everything in this ingredients that are needed not all of them get in the popcorn that I'm holding okay let me keep that so let's say that a reacting with B will give C now there is going to be some reagent in excess it means that it has more than enough where the other is going to be the limiting reagent where it doesn't have enough and it limits the amount of products that we give in. Suppose A has, we're gonna assume that one A and one B would give one C. So here, as you can see that we have more A's than B's. So this is the leftover A and no matter what we do, we cannot produce any more C's because we need the bees but the bees are running out that's why the B is the limiting reagent that's what always happens when you think about reactions let's make an uh, example of food to see stoichiometrically what happens let's say that one bologna plus two bread gives a single sand which I can't quite reach it there now let's say we have seven bologna and ten bread the seven bologna would make seven sandwiches so it is surely enough but two bread but ten breads will make only five sandwiches and then it would run out because we need two to make the sandwich so our bread is the limiting reagent that's what limits the whole reaction now let's look at a real reaction we're here for real chemistry so let's look at this reaction So, as you can see here, in this reaction, this is how we make, this reaction makes urea. Now, let's say we have two ammonia of 10 grams and the other also 10 grams. Both are 10 grams. So 10 grams of ammonia, actually let me write it over here so that it's more clear, 10 grams of ammonia, hope you guys can see that, times 1 mole of ammonia. Remember, when we cancel out values and make fractions, we have to make sure that the fraction 
will be equal to 1 so that our value doesn't change we don't want to we don't want the value to change we want the you know unit to change so 17 grams of ammonia would be one mole of ammonia so this will cancel out all the grams that there is leaving 0 0.588 moles of ammonia now let me erase this part to see what CO2 has to do so as usual we have 10 grams of carbon dioxide which is the same thing as one mole I mean times one mole of CO2 over 44 grams of CO2 this will remove the grams so that we can measure by moles remember this thing that the masses of these reactants tell us nothing about the reagents so we have to take the number of these so we take it and get 0 0.227 moles of carbon dioxide so this one will be more than enough but this one will be the limiting reagent so I have this. you see these are theoretical yield so that doesn't actually happen there is actually a fraction of yield that happens which we called the percent yield it is the actual yield I would just write a here the actual yield over the theoretical yield the thing you are expre expecting so you are expecting there's going to be 10 grams of yield but there is 8.4 grams by the way since this is percent you have to multiply by 100 so doing all the calculation the person yield would be 84 percent so what do you expect won't exactly happen all the time so that's all there is to it hope you had some good food for thought in these stuff okay so that's all there is to it thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye